because I was small, I wasn't recruited highly. And, and Seton Hall actually came to see me play at St. Anthony's, and they actually said that I was too small. This is going to hurt. It's time, it's time for, the for the Suffering Podcast. 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 All of our effort and energy goes into making it to the top. We work so hard and give 150% of ourselves to achieve our goals. Getting tunnel vision and not seeing the potential pressures and dangers around us. We make it to the top of the mountain and believe that we're good for a while. While we were climbing, there was a hunger inside of us that can never be duplicated. What is discovered is, is that the surface area to stand on the top of the mountain is much smaller than on the climb up. One step to the right or to the left and we fall. Unless we find a new goal, a new mountain to climb. The human species instinctually thrives on the pursuit rather than the achievement. I'm Kevin Donaldson here with Mike Felice, and on this episode of The Suffering Podcast, we welcome our new friend, John Valentin, to talk about the suffering of a pro baseball player. Now, John's made it to the top of the mountain, and he's here to talk to us about the journey. John, so much, thank you so much for joining it us. excelled at the top of the mountain, too. Not, yeah, we got some stats for you. Great career. I mean, Thanks for coming Thank in. you. Thank you for having me. Before we start anything, let's throw a big shout out to our marquee sponsors, and that's Toyota of Hackensack. We don't trust anybody but we do trust Toyota of Hackensack. So if you're looking for a car, go to toyotahackensack.com. And our brand new sponsor, that's Three Three Acres Luxury Condominiums. Go to threeacres.com. It's a wonderful facility in Jersey City. It's got everything you need. You never need to go anywhere. So thank you so much. Please support our sponsors. And then back to John. John, um, you know, you're another Hoboken guy. Jersey City. But you, you came to us from our Hoboken, like, poll. Or Hoboken contingent. That's my uh, that's my background. Yep, the Jersey beeps. City, Hoboken. Yep, Second Street bred. Absolutely, St. So, Anthony's High School. Yeah. So what what's the hospital in Jersey City that you were born in? Margaret Hayes. Or that I'm sorry that you were hatched in. No, I was laid. <laughs> Margaret Haig Hospital. Margaret Haig. Were you also we're, born there? No, actually, um, well, I went originally back. Originally from New York, aren't you? Well, actually, I went back to, uh, you know, where my brother was born. I have a two-year-old brother that was uh, born in Nassau Hospital in Mineola. So okay. I was living in Jersey City at the time, but I went back to my mom's old doctor. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Now, John, every week we take a question from our audience and this week's social media question comes from 101 Jane 57. I don't know how where they come up with these names, but it says, "What is the hardest decision that you ever had to make?" You're our guest today. I'm going to pass this one off to you. I'm assuming they're they're in your professional life. Well, um, you know, that's a good question. Um, I I have done a lot of good things. Uh, very happy with the way my career ended or and started and played. Um, but I would have loved to have hit the ball more to right field. <laughs> <laughs> you had a 279 career average. I, I mean, know, but if I, would, well. if, I, if I would have hit the ball to right field, I probably would have hit 300. See, you now know? you weren't playing against a shift back then either. Now, that's true. So. But I lifted the ball. So that's, you know, hitting the ball off the wall in Fenway Park made, made my career. That's one of the most storied ballparks. I've been to Fenway Park twice. And see, that's still my favorite. I, I used to like, I'm not a Yankees fan, but I used to like Yankee Stadium, the old stadium, because there's history involved. Now, Boston is one of the few places where the history is still there. So I love it. Absolutely. So, Mike, what do you think? Well, I went to Fenway Park one time and got thrown out in the second inning, but that's besides the point. Was that the hardest decision you ever have made to go to Fenway Park? It wasn't my decision to get thrown out. <laughs> it was security. What do you think? I, you know, I mean, in our career, I think my hardest decision was to retire. Ah, oh, you stole my answer, you son of Good. a bitch. <laughs> you should have went to you first then. Son of uh, a bitch. Yeah, I mean, that, that that had to be the hardest thing. I mean, you you know, like you, when you retired, it had to be a hard decision to retire to separate yourself from the career that you've had. Yes, you know, but we, injuries we, played a little part of that. I couldn't do it. Same with us. I couldn't do it as good as I used to do yeah, it. Yeah. So yeah, it was somewhat easy. But you but know, it, you always want come, you always want to play. You it's got to come to the time where injuries, where you're not going to be the same player you were. So it's like, I guess it's time to go. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And, and, and it that, tells you. Your body tells you. Your mind tells you. You know. Your heart is a different story. See, with him and I, my answer is is the same as I, Mike's. Ours was mental injuries where yeah. we couldn't really go. Because we were to work. we were both involved in critical incidents, and we were forced to retire. Where one day we went to work, and the next day we weren't. It mm. wasn't our. See, I think I think a lot of it has to do with 
your choices. Like if you chose, if you if you left on your terms on uh, uh, with a with a whole, we didn't leave. I'd on still our be terms. playing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's we didn't. We At fifty five, <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I, now you could go to right field because your bat's not that that's fast. Right. And you just there push you it to right field. There you go. They and, piss me away all the time. You know, so. you you could you could still be playing. I think Jamie Moyer played till he was forty nine. I was reading the list. There was one guy who played till he was like sixty six, but I, as in the early nineteen hundred. I believe Omar Vizquel uh, played until he was fifty. Fifty two. Yeah. Ozzy Smith was up there too, wasn't he? I don't think Ozzy was, but Omar was terrific. Great player. So, John, you know, you've you're you're a legend in New Jersey. You know, it's always it's always nice to see a Jersey boy moving on up and uh making making it to the big leagues because we we hold these people in this state. I don't know, New Jersey's such a weird area. Don't wouldn't you agree? I wouldn't say that. I, I think being from New Jersey is pretty cool. It is, but when one of our own makes it up to the top, it's like we gather around them. They're, they become our own. We protect them. Well, this is the East Coast, right? Yeah. So you got Jersey, you got Boston, you got Philadelphia. You're going to get it straight. <laughs> well, you, you <laughs> yeah, know that's good. That's a good answer. I had a conversation with someone the other day. It's considered true Jersey because when you're from Jersey, you're true. You're a true person. Wherever you go in the country, people are going to know you're from New Jersey because you're true. You tell it like it is. Pretty much, yeah. good or bad. Yeah, it's, exactly. You know, you, Whether you, you, you want to hear it or not, yeah, you're gonna. I mean, hear you it. you try to be polite. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you want to be polite all the time and and try to get your point across. But it comes out. And you're still from but, Jersey, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Jersey City, pol- or I'll even encompass it, Hudson County, polite isn't polite. In, well, you in know, the Midwest. it's 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 a city. It's <laughs> Jersey City, so you, you're gonna get a little bit of uh, the good, the bad, and the indifferent. You know, so. <laughs> but but they're going to get your attitude and and your perspective on it. That's true. You know, that, you're, that's always why, gonna, you're always going to get why it straight. That's true so, Jersey. You know, what's so great about being from New Jersey is New York, right? Mm-hmm. New York is there. Jersey's there. You, you're always competing with each other in a sense. You always want to... You know, New Yorkers don't like New Jersey. <laughs> New Jersey we're, we're don't like, the, like New York. We're like the, know, we're considered like the redheaded stepchild of New York. You know, but it's kind of cool to be from New Jersey. It, it, but. Like I said, it, wherever you go, you could take someone out of their area, but you can't take their area out of you. That's and, uh, most and New likely, Jersey is, yeah. is always in your heart. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Well, they so the, New Jersey is one of those ways of speaking. Where no matter when you open your mouth, they're like, "Oh yeah, you're from either New York or New Jersey." That That's is true. That's true. Um, but I do appreciate you coming here. I want you to tell our audience a little bit about yourself, where you grew up. You know, where where'd you where'd you first start? Let's put I, I grew up in downtown Jersey City. Uh, I went to St. Michael's High uh, Grammar School, um, and also to the high school. But what what's that? is Marion section? No, no, Heights, downtown uh, near near St. Michael St. Anthony's, which is like uh, Hamilton Park area, uh, downtown by Hoboken. Yeah, because um, everything about Jersey City has a section. You're either from the Heights, you're from Marion, you're from Country Village, <laughs> right? Yeah, so that I walked to school St. Michael's, and then when St. Michael's um, closed, they, yeah, they closed down. I went to St. Anthony's, which was like two blocks away. Mm. I played for Hurley. Um, in basketball. Oh yeah, That's Bobby right. Hurley. Yeah, absolutely. And you had you Bobby had a... Hurley, senior, senior. Yeah, and you know, junior used to play with us when he was in seventh and eighth grade. Um, but yes, uh, played for the basketball team, played for the baseball team. Did you play in the Seagull Classic in South Jersey? I don't because Bobby Hurley did. I don't recall. So no. Seagull Classic was uh, was I went to Holy Spirit High School in South Jersey in Epsecon, and. So they had the Seagull Classic where they brought basketball teams from all across the country. And I know Jersey City, I know Bobby Hurley played there. And, you know, it was a big thing because he was, he was looking up. His career was looking real big. And he came down there. They, they had to shut it down because there was a couple shootings out front. But, mm. yeah. But I, I was wondering about that, if you played on the basketball team. I did play for two years. Yeah, I played with David Rivers. Rivers David Rivers, yeah. Who, I saw that. Um, went on to Notre Dame. Notre correct? Dame yeah. and went to the NBA, then went to Europe to mm. play. Yes, very good player. So where'd you go to where'd you go to your play your high school ball? Or you played at St. Anthony's, but you played baseball there as well? I played baseball and basketball at St. Anthony's, yes. It wasn't, you know, the the baseball program was uh pretty decent. I wouldn't say um it was the greatest program uh in a sense. Uh 
the, the it best. Was, it wasn't the, as good as Seton Hall Prep. The, the, yeah, I just, well, I just want to say that <laughs> C, Hudson Catholic and Hut, St. Yeah, Peter's Hudson. Prep were probably the best teams in our division in, 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 in Hudson County. In, in Hudson Seton, County, Seton Hall Prep was probably the best in the state. Oh, there's no question. Yeah. Seeing our prep has a great reputation of having a till he got there. Yeah, having a good program. It's run by you know Michael S- Shepard Jr. Seton Hall University graduate is yeah. their head coach, <laughs> um, and very good player, great, great guy. So when did when did they first realize or you first realized that you have a vocation? You you have a talent for baseball. Like you, you there's there's pl- the guys who play, and then there's guys who play. Because I remember the first time I saw one of the most natural baseball players I ever saw, and he actually ended up going to Georgia Tech, a kid by the name of Kevin Holman. I just, I watched him play, and it was like, it was an extension. It was like you and I, or not not you, because you obviously, (laughs) it was like Mike and I breathing. That's how he played ball. When did you first realize that? Pretty much was uh, not to be overly confident, but I had a pretty good little league experience. Um, I played on the all-star team. I played shortstop. I pitched. I had a pretty good arm. I felt that I was somewhat better than most kids in mm-hmm. a sense. You know, you make the all-star team, but I was very small and skinny. And I was very small and skinny when I was in high school for St. Anthony's and for the basketball team as well. You know, I, I did see like your rookie card when I was looking you up and you were awfully skinny. <laughs> yeah, I was really skinny. When a kid is skinny, you know, you somewhat, you know, you have a chip on your shoulder all the time. Being from Jersey City, you have to be a fighter in a mm. sense. Um, that's my background. When you play for a – I had very, very good coaches. I had – Mike Hogan was a good coach in my high school. The Fa was a good coach. Eddie Ford. That's what Eddie I'm Ford. The Fa. Yeah. He's synonymous with baseball. He, in, he used to have the Fa's corner in the Jersey Journal all the time. I used to field the baseball the wrong way. And he actually showed me how to field the right way. And from that point on, I was basically fielding pretty well. And I got better and better. So when I was a senior and Mike Hogan, you know, was, was a great coach, he took me to different camps. I went to North Carolina camp. I got recognized by coaches for, like from James Madison University who liked me. You had something extra. Yes. Well, yeah. you know, he always took the good kids, you know, and, and try to put them in a good position to be seen. So I went to different camps. And by doing that, I learned from college players. I also went to the Seton Hall camp and I learned from them as well. Um, so when I was a senior, my brother, who's two years older than I am, um, went to Seton Hall, wanted to go to Seton Hall, had a good criminal justice program. He became an investigator in Newark for the prosecutor's office. Very nice. He became captain. But um, I didn't get any scholarships. I guarantee so, your brother worked underneath Tommy Adams. Possibly. De- guarantee. Possibly. I he, don't was know de- the, he was deputy chief there. He's a yeah, very dear friend yeah, of mine. I don't know the names. Because I was small, I wasn't recruited highly. And, and Seton Hall actually came to see me play at St. Anthony's, and they actually said that I was too small no. in a sense. That I was too skinny, too small. So uh, that, that I could on, that, that I couldn't play in Division One. That chip on your shoulder just got bigger. Well, you know, when you're competing, you want to prove everybody wrong, right? So um, my brother was going to Seton Hall. Um, I had an opportunity to play for St. Peter's Prep on Kennedy Boulevard. Now, um, I didn't want to play for. St. Peter's at the time. They weren't a good program at the time. And I felt like I wanted to challenge myself. And I said to myself, you know, I'm going to follow my brother's footsteps. I'm going to go get a good education. I, I always went to St. Michael's and St. Anthony's. They were, pro, you know, they were Catholic schools. Seton Hall is a Catholic school. Not that I'm like super religious, but I grew up a Catholic. Okay. Um, and then I said, you know what? I'm going to try out for the team and they're going to see me every day. And they're going to see whether, and I'm going to try to prove to them that I can play the game or I can't. Or you get a good education. Or I get when a good win. education. So, and I, so and you, I, had, you had to walk. I, you had to walk on. And I walked on. Yeah. Yes. After you know, there were 50 kids trying out. They kept eight. Wow. Yeah. So I was one of the eight. Um, At the old John Shepherd, you know, your friend John Shepherd, Seton Hall Prep comes back from North Carolina as a sophomore. 
And you know he was a shortstop yep. at Seton Hall Prep. And his father was a head coach at Seton Hall And his University. father was a head coach. And after playing on the B team for about a week or two, our senior captain was a shortstop. He was the shortstop. His name was Joe Armini. He came up with a sore elbow in a sense. He couldn't play shortstop anymore for like a two-week period that he needed to rest. Okay, so the coaches said, why don't you come play with us? Because I was a more defensive player than I was an offensive player. And then John played second. I played short. The rest is history, in a sense. I, I played very, very well. Joe Armini became the designated hitter, the DH, and I was, you know, playing shortstop, batting ninth. I was batting ninth, and you know, there's a book out there that says, you know, it's it's the short the the, th the three hit men and the guy who batted ninth, and I'm the guy. So wow. o, o and T Carroll Field. Yes. So that, that's the that's the Larry right. Bow, and I always this is why I always admired Larry Bow. Again, being a Philly fan, I'm going to bring up a Philly guy. I always admired Larry Bow because he he had given many interviews where his coaches and people throughout his life said, "Kid, you're too small. You're not going to play." But he said, "To hell with them." So I remember we're so we're talking a little. I want to let everybody in the audience know this. We're talking a little bit, and he's like, "Yeah, well, you know, what suffering and this." There it is, right there. That's the adversity you just overcame. Yes. You were not meant to play on a on a on that baseball team. You, you walked on to a D one baseball team. Yes. And went up not being them. recruited. Yes. And and what, and what was great about that, in a sense, that every player on that team was fantastic. Oh, yeah. mm. I mean, I, Martise Robinson. Martise Robinson, another guy I went to high school. He fantastic first baseman that should have been in it, had a ten year career. In, in the MLB. He batted 409, I think, his senior year. Yeah. Or something was, like that. It was, was crazy. It was fantastic. And Mo Vaughn came the very next year. Mo Vaughn. Wow, Mo that's Vaughn, a name uh, I have not heard right? of. You had time. Craig Biggio Craig catching. Craig Biggio. <laughs> he, he played baseball with a, a Hall of Famer. Yes. You know, we had great, great teammates. You know, it, Mike so, Shepard. I'm sure you're going to. Mike Shepard Sr. was a fantastic coach. And uh, so was the assistant coach was Ed Blankmeyer. Blank Blank Ed Blankmeyer was yeah. fantastic. And he basically, you know, um, went on to coach St. John's, you know. Did you grow in, in, in college? I mean, you said you were a small, skinny kid. Did you grow a little bit? I didn't grow until, wow, in the minor leagues. Well, let's just say from my senior year to my freshman year, I grew three or four inches, gained about 10 pounds. But more than anything, I was a really pretty good defensive player. Mm. And that basically kept me on the field to be able to get drafted because I remember my freshman year when, you know, we would play games and there'd be a ton of scouts behind the, the fence watching our games, uh, playing St. John's or whoever, Rutgers. And the Red Sox scout basically touches me on my shoulder and says, you know, kid, you can play in the big leagues. 